Welcome to the CRC Evans training video featuring the copper backup clamp. The copper backup clamp is an electrical, mechanical, pneumatic unit. The clamp's function on the pipeline is to clamp the pipe ends in place while providing copper backup for an external route pass. The electrical system is a self-contained 24 volt system that provides power for the RF transmitter and the air control valves. The main components of the electrical system are the voltage meter and the Anderson plug on the nose cone and the two 12 volt batteries located on the rear of the machine. The clamp's pneumatic system is essential for operation. The clamping shoes, drive wheels, and brakes all operate off of pneumatic power. The main components for the pneumatic system are the nose cone quick disconnect, the pressure gauges, and the two air tanks on the rear of the clamp. The smaller tank provides pressure for the brakes and clamping mechanisms. The larger tank can be pressurized up to 210 PSI and provides pressure for the drive wheels. The side mounted drive wheels move the clamp through the pipe using pressure against the pipe wall. The joint to joint travel speed is adjustable. The clamp is operated by using the radio frequency remote control. With the remote, the operator can control a variety of actions. Now that we've had an overview of the clamp, let's set it up for operation. First, connect a source of air to the nose cone to fill the tanks with air. While the clamp is outside of the pipe, it's a good time to check the oil fog lubrication. It's located under the batteries on the rear of the clamp. The oil fog reservoir drips lubricant into the pneumatic system. Here you can add oil if necessary. And adjust the rate of oil fog in the system by turning the adjustment screw located on the top of the glass dome. The recommended rate of flow is six drops per minute. The oil fog is visible whenever pneumatics are activated. The idler wheel assemblies are located under the clamping shoes. They must be set equal so that the clamp sits centered in the pipe. The easiest way to tell if the idler roller assemblies are correctly configured is to raise the rear shoes. Watch the center of the nose cone. If it stays centered, the idler wheel assemblies are correctly configured. If you see movement on the horizontal axis, then the idler wheel spring assemblies require adjustment. In this example, when the rear shoes are activated, the nose cone moves to the right. That means that the idler roller spring assembly on the left side is too low. To adjust the idler wheel assemblies, move the clamp out of the pipe past the shoes so that the idler rollers are visible. Always insert the red safety peg behind the shoes when working on the clamp. Loosen the nut on top of the spring assembly. Adjust the spring and re-tighten the nut. Move the clamp back into the pipe and raise the rear shoes.
If the nose cone still moves on a horizontal axis, repeat adjusting the idler wheel spring assembly until the nose stays centered. A small amount of vertical movement is permissible. To install the clamp into the pipe, pick up the clamp by its lifting arm. Ensure the clevis is restrained by inserting the safety pin through the lifting beam. Lift the clamp and guide it into the pipe, rear end first, until the clevis touches the pipe end. Be sure to retract the brakes. Remove the safety pin. Raise the drive wheels and jog the clamp into the pipe until the idler roller assemblies are inside the pipe. Unhook the clevis and tuck it inside the pipe behind the clamping section. Once the clamp is in the pipe and pressurized with air, it's ready for operation. The clamp is operated by the radio frequency remote control. Turn on the RF receiver located on the left side of the nose cone. Be aware that you must power on both the receiver and the remote for the clamp to turn on. Turn on the remote control by pressing the green button. You'll know the receiver and the remote are linked by this flickering light on the remote. On the receiver, the link light also flickers. When both lights are flickering, the remote has control of the clamp. With the remote, the operator can raise or lower the shoes. Notice that to lower the shoes, the operator has to first push the green on shift button, then select the appropriate shoes down button. The operator can jog the clamp forward or reverse. They can apply or remove the brakes. and raise or lower the drive wheel. To move the clamp from joint to joint, the operator will auto travel the clamp by pressing the on shift button first and then pressing auto travel. The clamp will then propel itself to the pipe opening and stop automatically when the whisker drops. The copper backup clamp has two major functions, lining up the pipe ends and providing copper backup for the external root pass. There are four steps in the operation of the clamp. First is to align the copper shoes with the bevel edge. Second is the aligning of the pipe ends. The third step is the clamping of the pipe and making the weld. Fourth is moving the clamp from pipe joint to pipe joint. To align the clamp, use the remote pendant to jog the clamp and position the coppers under the pipe bevel. Raise the rear shoes, then raise the coppers to ensure a good fit. Once satisfied, leave the rear shoes raised and drop the coppers. Bring the next piece of pipe in and align the pipe ends. Raise the front shoes and copper, clamping the pipe joint in place. Make the weld, and once the weld is finished, then auto travel the clamp to the next joint and repeat the process. To keep everything running smoothly, perform periodic inspections of the clamp. Check for leaks, wear and tear, and loose connections. When a copper shoe becomes too pitted to be effective, remove and replace it. To remove a copper shoe, raise the coppers, loosen the fasteners and remove the shoe.
replace it with a new shoe. And retighten the fasteners. Simple preventative maintenance will keep the clamp running smooth throughout the workday. Let's do a quick review of the copper backup clamp. The clamp is electrically powered by a self contained 24 volt system. The main components of that system are the voltage meter, Anderson plug for charging, and the two 12 volt batteries that ride on the rear of the clamp. The pneumatic system uses air pressure to clamp the pipe during welding and to travel the clamp from joint to joint. The clamping shoes, drive wheels, and brakes all operate off of the pneumatic system. The main components of the pneumatic system are the air quick disconnect, the main pressure gauge and the regulated pressure gauge, the oil fog reservoir, and the two air tanks on the rear of the machine. There are four steps for the operation of the clamp. First, align the coppers to the bevel. Second, align the pipe ends. Third, clamp the pipe ends and make the weld pass. Dropping the shoes, and traveling the clamp to the next joint to repeat the process. Thanks for your interest in the CRC Evans Copper Backup Clamp. We'll see you on the spread. And remember, work safe.